Good morning. How is everyone? I hope you're all well. For any fathers out there who are celebrating today Father's Day, I wish you happy Father's Day. <sighs> what a day to have a discussion about this. And this, this video is going to have a little bit of a different tone than many of you will have become familiar with on this channel. And that is because we are talking about Chad Doerman. Now, many of you had sent me emails detailing where I could find information on this Claremont incident. And I'm sure that any of you watching this, uh, you are familiar. And what I will say is if you are unfamiliar with it for some reason, you are unfamiliar with that name, then all I would say is the crime has a trigger warning, a massive, massive trigger warning attached to it. And for that reason, I won't be detailing the crime itself. We will just do some vague references to it. And if you are not affected by what you hear in this and you you get the gist of what it's about and you're not familiar with it then go and go and search <clears throat> but look i think it's safe to say that what this guy has done now this is a 32 year old father who was who was well i don't think it's even potentially he, he has committed one of the most heinous crimes imaginable imaginable I, I i struggle to to contemplate how you get into this position I, I i struggle to ascertain whether there is anything that any individual could do that is worse you know and we as a world have seen some huge huge atrocities you know from from governments and what governments do to individuals on a mass scale you know and, and there's it's unquestionable that when you talk about some of these mass figures in history and some of the things that they have done you know on channels like this we talk and i'm not even talking about the the world level stuff i'm talking about even the bundies of the world and and the dharmas but this this guy and this crime because of the the so personal level and and the the meaning behind it there is there is this there is nothing there, there is nothing that an individual can do that is that is worse you know the, this guy is a, a at the end of the day he's a father and a, and a husband you know his family look upon him as their protector their guardian their guidance you know he should be there for all of those things you know he should be the 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 one person out of you know the parents and the family and friends anyway that if there is anything that they need that they can go to him and he will provide or at least try to provide to the best of his ability you know sadly because of the type of world we live in that seems to, you know, it's not always easy to be a parent. It isn't. It's not easy to be a child either. But, you know, being a parent is sometimes difficult. But, the, you know, it, I think about, you know, what a lot of people go through. And, and, you know, some of you who have been around this channel for some time, you know, me growing up, my life growing up, was a, it wasn't an easy one. But... I appreciate fully that there's some people who had it far, far worse than what I did. And, you know, and, you know, there are parents out there who do massively struggle. They do massively struggle, but they do absolutely every single thing that they can. And to the point where they sacrifice themselves, their own life, their own time, their own, you know, the things that they want to do for the betterment of their child because they understand that when they've had a child their life as it was before their children ceases to exist and moving forward their life is about being a parent you know like i've caught some flack for the likes of the michael vaughan case in particular you know not so much in the summer wells case because the parents 
you know, they acted and reacted in ways that meant that they were, you know, cast in the, in not a very good light, but, you know, the Michael Vaughan case was a different one, and, and, you know, people struggled when I would turn around and say, look, at the end of the day, if you're a parent and you have a child, it is your absolute job, it, 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 beyond anything else, to provide protection for that child, no matter what. And you would get people who turn around and say, you know, the, the, things can happen. Things can happen. You can look the other way for a second and things can happen. And I get that. I get that. So if it, if something happens and you look back and you think, do you know what? These parents have always done everything. They have always done absolutely every single thing in their power. And this just caught them. I can, I can take it. I can take it. But what I won't take is for people to tell me that things can happen and that you can look the other way and something can happen. When you look back historically at the family in question and you can see multiple failings, multiple shots over the bow, and this was always going to be something that would happen in the end. Harm would come. We talk about this in... in in, in work industries, they, they talk about, and I've spoken about Bird's Triangle, where you have situations that, are, like I say, they're almost shots over the bow, and they are warning shots telling you, look, something's going to happen, and eventually it's gonna, you're going to lose someone, and, and people just still don't do anything with it. But this guy, and this crime, like he, he's doing the, um, the... the Pro preliminary hearing is the 26th of June. That seems to be a date that is um, resonating throughout the whole of the US at the moment with multiple cases seemingly around this 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 date. We've also got Nicola Bully's case in the UK, obviously the, um, the hair in there, the final hair, in, and that should be on the 26th of June as well. So a lot happening around that date. But um, yeah, I just, I, I just don't get it. I don't understand how children over the years have just become, and I say this multiple times, just cannon fodder. It is just cannon fodder. They're like bargaining chips. You know, if something happens in a relationship that they are used as weaponry, you know, I've seen it, I still see it today, even in our world. You know, I have children, I have stepchildren, and, you know, it's something that I have briefly spoken about. Some of the members around the channel will probably know more, but and I will talk about it more as time progresses. But um, I, I just I don't understand how people can get to this point where they want want to do this. They, you get to that point now. I watched the the body cam footage of his arrest and the guy is as calm as a cucumber yeah he fucking cried like a baby in court maybe that's when all you know he, he realized i don't even think it's that i just think it's he, he just cried for you know he thought that probably in that matter that would do him some form of justice or help i don't i don't know but you know the just after doing the crime itself and and let's just take a minute as well and what I will say is the, the, the officers, the deputies who were on the scene there, you've got to, you know, we criticise law enforcement. We've criticised law enforcement heavily in the likes of the Idaho 4 case. We've criticised TBI in the Summer Wells case. And, you know, there's issues in the UK with the police force at the moment. We've recently had a, a police officer who... It would seem that the Met had hidden things that he'd done and uh, he went on and escalated and escalated until he killed someone. And it's been this, you know, a horrendous situation. Horrendous. And I'll talk about that in a live at some point. But these guys, what people have got to appreciate as well, there is a flip side to the, to the fact that we can criticise them. And that is that, that, can you imagine being one of these guys who comes onto this scene? You know, and they they have to they see what they see. You know, on the body cam footage, them black boxes were blacked out, and you know why they were blacked out. But they weren't blacked out for them. You know, they they didn't get that. You know that the, the, the <laughs> they didn't get to not see it. They saw it, and they saw that entire scene. And these are people who are human. That you know, that just because they have a badge. <laughs> It doesn't mean that their eyes don't work, their hearts don't work. You know, a lot of these guys have families themselves, they have children themselves. 
and things like this can go on to affect them for the for the rest of their lives so you've got the incident itself you've got the victims there you've got the the young mum who will have to live for this live with this for the rest of her life as well you've also got another the, the sister of the three victims you know this is the the reverberations the ripples that go out and touch you know many many people many many people the the community itself as they have to now try and repair and understand and we've seen it as well do you know what we've seen situations where you look at brian koberger for instance and you look at how people have treated his family his sisters and you wonder whether this could negatively impact the lives of say the sister as they try and understand and you know what people are like people are nasty motherfuckers they are, you know, some people just don't have the empathy. We've spoken about the fact that there seems to be a massive lack of empathy. How many people are going to wonder what happened behind closed doors and what got pushed onto them boys? And the potentials for other people to be blamed and the looks, and I can only imagine it, but... <sighs> wow. Wow. Like I say, I don't expect many people will see this video. What difference does it make? It won't make any difference because this has been going on for a long time. And, you know, the sad fact is, is, you know, the 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 nature of the beast is that people, they like drama, they like ongoing stories, and, you know, we get pulled into them. And sometimes these sort of stories are just clear cut if you like they they very very quickly disappear they get forgotten about and that's that's why they continue to happen because because they get forgotten about nobody is truly held accountable for it nobody they don't look into the roots of how this came to be this guy apparently had he'd planned it he'd planned it for a long period of time i've heard through like various things i've read that there was potential they were going through a situation um, as a couple and people have speculated as to whether that little bit that little sort of motorhome thing not really like a an egg-shaped caravan it was he living in it separate from the family and you know this seems to be more and more how men especially seem to cope with issues in the relationship and like I say I've seen it I've seen that in my own life here where men weaponize their children as a way of getting back at a partner who has not behaved or done what they wanted them to do. I just want to have a minute just at the end of this video just to please 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 think about these three young boys who lost their life here. <sighs> like I say if you're a good father today if you're a good father Happy Father's Day, and um, I'll catch you all in the next one.